Have you ever felt the prickling sensation of unseen eyes upon you, whispering secrets from the shadows that dance just beyond the reach of light? Welcome, dear audience, to Abyss of Horror, where the boundary between reality and nightmare blurs into a realm of unfathomable darkness. Tonight, I invite you to gather around as close as you dare for a story that will chill your bones and haunt your most horrific nightmares. A tale not for the faint of heart, but for those who seek to explore the darkest corners of our existence. Our narrative this evening is titled Stitched Silence, a story that delves deep into the supernatural, where psychological horror grips the mind with icy fingers. It is a tale of a cursed doll whose sinister presence weaves a web of fear and madness around its chosen victim. What secrets lie within its porcelain gaze? What darkness does it summon from the depths of its silent world? I always knew she was watching me, even when everyone else said it was just my imagination running wild. But the truth is far more sinister than any child's fears, I began, my voice barely a whisper as I recounted the tale that had haunted me since childhood. The story of the stitched silence, of her, the porcelain doll that sat atop the highest shelf in my grandmother's dusty old attic, was not one of innocence or play. It was a tale drenched in darkness, soaked in a malevolence that clung to my bones like the chill of a shadowy night. It all started when I was sent to live with my grandmother, a stern woman with eyes that seemed to pierce through the veil of reality itself. Her house, an ancient structure perched at the edge of our town, was a labyrinth of secrets and silent whispers. But it was the attic that called to me, a siren song that whispered of hidden treasures and forgotten stories. And there, among the cobwebs and shadows, I found her, the doll with the stitched lips and eyes that seemed to follow my every move. She's been waiting for you, my grandmother said the first time she caught me staring at the doll. Her voice, a chilling blend of amusement and warning, sent shivers down my spine. She's very old, very special. But remember, some things are better left undisturbed. I wish I had heeded those words. I wish I had understood the ominous warning veiled within them. But I was a child, curious and foolish drawn to the mystery of the doll that seemed to watch me with an intensity that felt all too real. Nights in that house were a cacophony of creaks and groans, the building itself seeming to settle into a deeper darkness as the world around it slept. But it was in the silence, in the moments between the settling of old wood and the distant howl of the wind, that I heard it, a soft, almost imperceptible whisper first, I thought it was my imagination, the product of too many stories and a mind too eager to find magic in the mundane. But the whispers grew louder, clearer, forming words that seemed to seep into my very soul. Come play, she whispered, her voice a melody of sadness and longing. Come play with me, forever and ever. I tried to ignore it, tried to convince myself it was just a dream figment of my overactive imagination. The doll's presence grew more oppressive with each passing night, her stitched lips and unblinking eyes, a constant reminder of the invitation I was too afraid to accept. The turning point came on a night bathed in the light of a full moon, its silver rays casting long shadows across my room. Sleep eluded me, the weight of unseen eyes pressing down on me with an intensity that felt almost physical. And then, the whispers returned, this time accompanied by the soft, unmistakable sound of something moving in the darkness. I found myself drawn to the attic, my feet moving of their own accord, guided by a force I could neither see nor understand. The door creaked open with a groan, revealing the doll no longer confined to her shelf, but sitting in the center of the room, bathed in moonlight. Come play, she whispered again her voice now a siren's call that filled the space between us with an electric charge. Come play and never be lonely again. I don't know what possessed me to reach out, to pick her up and hold her in my arms. In that moment, the air around us seemed to shift, the temperature dropping until my breath formed clouds in the cold air. 
Her eyes, once dull and lifeless, glowed with a malevolent light, and her stitched lips curved into a smile that chilled me to my core. You're mine now, she whispered, her voice no longer sweet, but laced with a darkness that echoed with the malice of centuries. Forever and ever. Panic surged through me, a tidal wave of fear that broke against the shores of my mind with relentless force. I tried to scream, to call out for help, but the sound died in my throat, suffocated by an unseen force. The days that followed were a blur of shadows and whispers, the doll never far from my side. My grandmother's warnings, once vague and cryptic, now made a terrifying sense. The doll, a vessel for something ancient and malevolent, had chosen me, binding me to her with chains forged from fear and darkness. I searched for a way to break the bond, to free myself from her grip, but every attempt only seemed to strengthen her hold on me. The whispers grew louder, more insistent, filling my mind with images of despair and madness. In a final act of desperation, I took her back to the attic, to the spot where I had first found her. The moon was hidden behind clouds that night, the world around us shrouded in an oppressive darkness that seemed to swallow the light. I release you, I whispered, my voice shaking with fear and determination. I am not yours to claim. For a moment, the world stood still, the silence so profound it felt like a physical weight upon my chest. And then, with a scream that tore through the night like a blade, she vanished, the doll disintegrating into a cloud of shadows that dissipated into the darkness. The relief was immediate, a lifting of the weight that had pressed down on me since the day I had found her. But the scars she left behind were not so easily healed, the memories of those days a constant reminder of the darkness that lurks in the corners of our world, waiting for the curious and the foolish. My grandmother never spoke of the doll again, and I never ventured into the attic. But sometimes, in the dead of night, I swear I can hear her whispering, a soft, sad melody that drifts on the wind. Come play, she calls a reminder of the price of curiosity and the darkness that waits in the silence. Good. You're still here. This chilling journey into the abyss where the stitched silence reigns supreme now draws to its ominous close. Yet, within this twisted saga lies a cleverness, a dark allure that beckons us to look closer, to peer deeper into the abyss and question what lies beyond. It challenges us to confront our own shadows, to listen to the whispers in the dark, and to wonder. What would we do when faced with the stitched silence? Would we, like our protagonist, dare to unravel? Before you vanish into the shadows, remember to like and subscribe, lest you miss the next descent into the chilling depths of the abyss, if you dare.